And again, hi, I'm Mo. I am a chair here at PB who is hosting the event. Thank you to everybody at PB helping putting this together. So if you don't know about Kel and Julia, which I'm very surprised if you don't, Kel and Julia are graphic designers who do mostly music-based stuff and merch design and also just creative direction for albums and stuff like that as well. Um, Kel has worked with clients ranging from the Jonas Brothers to Curtis Connor. That merch was amazing. And Julia has worked with um, Francis Forever, who has a really popular TikTok song, Space Girl, which is amazing. And also recently they did an accidental collab with the Janae Aiko stuff, also amazing. Um, and so to start the event and to just make sure everything is okay, we're going to have a Q&A session. And if you have any questions, please drop them in the Q&A box and we'll make sure we can ask them during the time. Also a surprise for people who actually showed up to the event where you can submit your work for maybe a quick like review of it at the end of the stuff. We're gonna drop the form in the chat. So just make sure you fill out the form and like submit your work and everything will be okay. Um, and cool. So we're gonna start with the 15 minute design sessions. Um, thanks everybody for coming again and cool. Cal, Julia, you can take it away. I was actually gonna go first. Um, I just wanna say thank you guys so much for coming to this. This is so cool and of course love to do it with my bestie so um i actually already did the 30 minute design kel's doing it live i already did it because it's better if i just don't do it live but i'm gonna break down the process of kind of what i did um but shout out to everybody who is um watching from like a different time zone because you're crazy for that um just watching us do our little poster designs but yeah so let me share my screen and we can get started. Um, okay, can you all see this? Good, yes, cool, awesome. So, okay, hello, open. Okay, are we all looking at an inspo board right now? We're all looking at the same thing, okay. So usually for like, a, it's cool that we're doing like the 30 minute challenge because when I started doing these, um, I'm like a huge perfectionist when it comes to anything design, I'm sure Kel can relate, but with like 30 minute designs, um, it really allows you to kind of just like stop nitpicking everything because not, not everything has to be a portfolio piece. Um, and so that's kind of where this came from. Like 30 minute design doesn't have to mean like you don't include any kind of brainstorming or inspiration like in like Pinterest for design, like it just means allow yourself 30 minutes to just get the job done and just leave it at that. So for this, I put together a little inspo board of what I ended up making. Um, I'm doing Dead, Flower of Devotion. It was my favorite album that came out last year. Um, so as you can see, I did like these three little drawings of like kind of what I wanted to do. I definitely knew I wanted to do um, something that had lyrics from their song Flying because that is the song that the album is based around. It has the lyrics for Flower of Devotion. So of course I wanted to include flower imagery and then I work a lot with photos um, and like paneling repetitive imagery because I am a photo major. So I have like a large unused archive of photographs I've taken and collected that I can use in my design practice. So I knew I wanted to do that. Um, and then I also wanted like this painted texture for the flowers using some kind of photo technique. I was gonna figure it out. And then obviously I have a bunch of images that I pulled from Pinterest. Um, I definitely knew for like the title or like either dead or for flower of devotion, I wanted like this sort of like, like handwritten, you know, kind of with pen, like, sort of thing here. And then with the dry cleaning LP down here, and then the sort of like painted effect for these flowers down here and this couch, as you can see. And then um, same thing with like the font. I kind of either wanted it to be really bold with like a photo and these like contrasting colors, or I was just gonna go like full like painterly, like these flowers down here, or this like kind of collage of photos and like paint down here. Um, and I think I, I stuck to this pretty, pretty closely um, because that's kind of what it ended up looking like. But for the assets I ended up using, um, let me open this real quick. 
So for the background, I actually took this photo of, um, there's a bedspread at my parents' house that has some flowers and I really like the textures on it. So I was like, I'm gonna take a photo on my uh, iPhone and I'm just gonna upload it and use it. Um, just really like you can use anything, like take a photo of anything and then you can incorporate it in your design. So I took a photo of that and then I have a Getty subscription. So I just, I couldn't find anything rose related. So I just pulled something from that. I knew that I wanted to sex section this out in panels. Um, so I have that and those are the two I'm working with. Um, so then after that, after I picked those images, I created a threshold of like that um, comforter. And I really loved how the textures turn out, like the textures from the bedspread came through, which I loved. It gave me that painterly quality I was looking for. Um, and I just was like surprised that I could pull this from like a bed sheet because it was really what I wanted. And then what I was gonna do was either keep the black or make the black green and then paint in the white with um, the colors that I chose in my inspo board. Um, and then for like, the rose photo turning into like a cross hatched um, uh, half tone printmaking sort of thing that I was then going to layer with color. So let's go into the Photoshop file and I can break down the design a little bit. Um, okay, so this is what I ended up doing with sort of the background. Um, hopefully you guys can see that. Um, with the background, as you can see, I sort of layered this like green on top of the black um, because I wanted it to be like less dark and like add more color to it. But I also have these um, like painted, as you can see in the background, just using the paintbrush and filling in those flowers. And then before I even laid out any type, I just knew that I wanted to place my panels down that I wanted. So I started like adding the little rectangles that I wanted. Where's the other one? Yeah. Um, I originally wanted them, was thinking, and how I usually do most of my work is I will layer them like in an actual panel vertically. But the way that I laid them out, um, I kind of like the diagonal direction of it. Um, and the way that it ended up working out is, um, I just like kind of sloppily placed like a photo in here. As you can see, it's, um, it's just like added into the photo. Um, so it kind of looks like it was cut and paste and like screen printed, which I really liked. Um, and then what I didn't really mean to do, but it kind of just happened. I was gonna have the image just kind of repeat itself. But when I placed it down, it looked like the photo was continuing in the other panels, which I really liked. So I just kept it at that. Um, so that's what that one looks like. And then for the bottom one, it just kind of disintegrates kind of into nothing, but there's like a little bit of the bottom portion of the photo there. Um, so I had that laid out diagonal, which I thought looked good, but then I wanted to add the text, which was going to be dead. And then the flower devotion, then I was gonna have some lyrics from flying. Um, but usually I will place photo elements first and then add the text afterwards because I feel like that helps me the most. Um, so then I added some dead um, text and I really wanted these to look like they were kind of cut out. Um, this font in particular is Molen Surplus, which is from Behance. It's a really funky and cool font, um, but essentially like making that a smart object and then adding a stroke and making it the same as the um, color of the letter. So it has like the sort of outline around it that kind of makes it look like I was cut out with scissors and then going in and like kind of making it look kind of not as perfect as it would be. Um, and then adding like a little drop shadow to all of these very subtly, like kind of makes it like not look so flat, which I enjoy. Um, and then what else? What else, what else? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So I added, my little flower devotion with like a oil pastel brush. Um, just went in with my trackpad um, and did this over and over again, which is probably why I have a, a wrist sprain. <laughs> so yeah, um, doing that. And then uh, what else do I have in here? 
Yeah, so I just started adding lyrics um, and playing with kerning and the like spacing and skewing of text, uh, breaking all the rules because there are sh no rules to design really. Um, do whatever you want. Uh, here, the rest of them. Yeah, so as you can see, they kind of fill up this empty text space here um, and flow down to the end. But originally I was thinking about having like different photographs that represented like admiration, affection, obsession. I was gonna do that, but I was like, I'm spending too much time trying to think about like what I have in my archive that like relates to that. Let me just like pick one photo and kind of like chop it up, which ended up working out a lot more, like a lot better for me. Um, and then adding like a little like fire talk records up in the corner um but yeah I mean that was really it like I didn't want to like there were obviously things that I would change about it but like I think that's the point of 30 minute designing for posters is just like kind of letting it be it and letting it breathe um because not everything is going to be perfect and you're not going to love everything but yeah I'm kind of happy with how it turned out and like the process is was not that difficult it's just more so as like the process of like making things look a certain way and like giving things a certain text treatment and like the way that I lay it out and just like subtle things like adding drop shadows to make it look like it was actually like placed and cut on music posters stuff like that so that's really it um but yeah I think it ended up looking a lot like my original inspiration board um which I'm happy with so I think this is a pretty good representation of the record and what I was going for. So, yeah. Cool. Awesome, thank you so much for that. So we're gonna just swap over to Kel's screen. Um, cool. Just to make sure everybody understood what I said in the beginning, um, you're doing a post, you're meant to be doing the challenge with us if you want to, and the link is gonna be continually dropped throughout the chat. Um, so just, if you want to submit yourself, you can, if you don't want to, you don't have to either, but awesome. Again, thank you, Julia. So Kel, you're- Yeah, of course. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Can you guys see me okay? Cool. Okay. Oh. Feels so lonely. Okay, cool. Uh, thank you, Julia. That was fantastic. Um, I know like designing in a very short period of time is literally like one of the most stressful things you could do to yourself. Um, and I've only done this style a few times because I also focus way too much on detail. And when you are working, you know, you don't have all the hours in the day to spend on a certain project. So it is really good to practice, you know, how much stuff you can actually crank out in a very short period of time. So, um, that's what we're here to do. So I'm going to be doing Rina Sawayama because I love the album Sawayama. Um, I think she's awesome. And I think her aesthetic is really cool. And um, I just love everything about her. So that's what we're going to be doing. Um, I don't have too much planned for this. So <laughs> this is going to be a bit haphazard. Um, I know like the general things of what I want to be doing here. So I... Let me, can I hop over to my Pinterest? Can you guys still see my screen if I'm on here? I don't think we can see it if you're showing okay. your Pinterest right now. It's okay. I will, well, it was just my inspo board for um, Rena, but it's fine. Not, not too important. I didn't have that much in there anyway. So my goal with Rena is I want to create kind of like a liminal space. I'm like a big fan of liminal spaces because I think they are very strange and 
weirdly comforting. Um, so <laughs> that's what we're going to do. I have a bunch of images that I pulled. I'm really into like this, like Windows desktop vibe right now. I can't really explain it. So we're going to work with some of those. And I'm going to have Rena's picture in the center. So I have all of these masks kind of like separated out like that. And then I'm going to be putting Rena right in the middle. So I think I might want to use, I really like that grass picture, but I really like those clouds. So I'm just gonna blow this up and then I'm going to be kind of like skewing it into place. So there is my left mask. And then I'm going to do the same for my right. Oh, not the, not that. We're going to grab that. So I kind of want it to look like I'm looking into a really weird tunnel or like a kind of like a, a room. And then my top is going to be, yeah, we'll go with this one for my top mask. Oh yeah, thank you, Julia. All of these pictures I got from Unsplash. I'm a big Unsplash and like Pexels fan. Um, really great place for free resources for stuff like this. And they're all really high quality images. So definitely use them if you're ever in a bind. I'm gonna put Rena in a mask right here, just a square mask. Cute. And then down at the bottom, we're going to do some grass. Cute. All right. So that's where we have my masks all set. And then I made these little, I don't know, cherries that I'm gonna be putting on either side right here because I really like kind of like these semi like animated looking airbrushed objects. So I'm going to duplicate that. I just did that like with a soft brush and I just masked it out. So I'm going to flip horizontally and drop that right over there. And also the song, Cherry, you know. And let's go ahead and open my track listing. Um, the font I have pulled for this is, do, do, do. Navigo. I might keep the one that I had. 
but I really liked this font that I got from Adobe. Let me shrink this down. Oh, really difficult to do with my Wacom. Change that to white. All right, and then down here, we are going to add Sawayama. Oh. I've used uh, Rama Gothic before for a few other projects. It's a really awesome condensed sans serif font. And I'm just literally going to stretch this into place. I like my type to be a little bit taller than it should be, but I'm gonna leave it just like that. And then up here, we are gonna add Rena. And then my good old friend, Nope, what's it called? Sloop, if I can spell properly, which we all know I can't. And I love to stretch Sloop. It looks like such a beautiful font. It's kind of hard to read, but I don't know. Not everything is meant to be read. Some things are just meant to vibe. So I'm kerning that a little bit closer together. What if I put a bit of a bend on this. Yes, love that. Stretching that. And I have no sense of time. So as soon as I get close to the maximum amount of time, feel free to interrupt me because I will go on forever. You're good. Um, you're perfectly fine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, and I'll leave that till the end. Um, and one thing that I've been doing a lot recently is, sorry, I live on the loud street. Um, one thing I really like to do is take like, uh, maybe I'll do just a round liner. Um, I'm using this brush set from Stipple Studio. I've used it in a few of my videos. They're fantastic. Uh, I highly recommend um, going and checking them out if you do a lot of like heavy brush work. So what I've been doing is I take like a brush and then I add a stroke to it. So maybe we'll do like a really bright green or something that would be fun. And then like now when you draw with it, like you just get like this really cool effect already off the bat and I'm obsessed with it. So let's see what I can do. Um, let's bring this down a little bit. But yeah, really great if you want just like a really quick doodled effect, like, and then you can kind of just like shade it in, like, you know, you could do all sorts of stuff. And turn that into like a smiley face. Semi horrifying, but like kind of a vibe.
Is that too much? I don't know. Maybe we'll just do it on like one. I don't like that one. See, I'm glad that you guys agree. Semi horrifying, but it's a vibe, you know, it works. Um, okay. So maybe we'll go in here and do, actually, you know what we'll do? Really quick, I'm gonna go in and make kind of like this little box around my track listing. Um, maybe I'll go a little bit higher. I've been playing a lot with my <laughs> bevels lately, um, going a little overboard, but you know what? Also a vibe, good vibes only here. Um, I think they're really fun and I think we should all play with bevels more often because like, look, so fun. Change our color overlay. And I think like we're really afraid of bevels sometimes, even though it could literally be like the best time for, you know, a little less afraid of them. And like, you don't be afraid for like bevels to look bad. They take like a long time to get the hang of. So like, you know, give them a try. They're a lot of fun and they can really like change like the depth of your work. I'll just leave that bevel kind of hanging out there. I'll center that. This cherry needs to go over. Oh, I always hit that shortcut by accident. Okay, now before we wrap up, add another little, little leaf over there. What I'm gonna do is, I'm a big fan of my paper textures. If you watch any of my videos, um, I'm going to kind of like, I mean, I guess like you can play with it a bunch of different ways, but I have this one really high res paper texture I got, I think from like texture fabric. Uh, but I overlay this on top of pretty much like all of my posters. And I think it really like brings things to life. Like it has such a, such a big effect, you know, I think the last thing I'll do on this is kind of round out these corners. So I'm going into my bevel or not my bevel, my, what is this called? whatever this is called. Um, I'm just gonna smooth this out. Feather, contrast, bump your contrast up a little bit. And then I'm gonna create a new just like that. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> Thank you so much. that's, that's what I can do in, in 15 minutes. If I had like another 10 hours, I could go to town on this with too many layer effects, but yeah, I'll definitely post this like on social media later if I have some more time to spend on it, but that's what I could do just yeah, now. Thank you so much. <laughs> I'm sure everybody would love to just watch you design for like 10 hours. Um, <laughs> so we're going to head into the Q&A session. And just to clarify to everybody, like, I, I understand the struggle of MacBook Airs and about to take off. So um, just take your time and just try and make sure you get it in um, during the Q&A stuff right now. Sorry about that. Um, and just make sure you can submit it any way you can. And um, I also saw someone was trying to make a group chat 
in the chat, 100% recommend. So we're gonna head into the Q&A session right now, um, going off the group chat idea. The first question we have is from Dania and it's about just how do you go about building a community in design? Because I feel like, especially over quarantine, everybody has seen a growth in like Discord, graphic design Discord, graphic design streaming and that kind of stuff. And obviously you two have like your best friends, you have each other to thick and thin design and non-design. So how do people go about building those kind of relationships? I'm trying to decide who. Uh, I feel like, um, <laughs> uh, Kelly, you want to go first answering that question? I mean, <laughs> it's it's weird because it's. I hope you can. I, I think I muted myself. Um, I it's it's kind of interesting because like when I started, there was like not really any sense of a uh, community in design online, um, and if it was, it wasn't very friendly to a lot of uh, other people um and it's something that i wanted to start with like my youtube channel because i wanted to you know connect with more people because like um I, it was it's very lonely like online and like being a designer in like a very like male dominated world um and it's a very white industry it's a very elite industry and like it's not very accessible and friendly to a lot of people and so I think like this past year has shown that like you can literally pull a community out of thin air and it's been like a such an eye-opening process to like see how quickly people are like willing to like you know bond over something because like it's been such a traumatizing year for so many people that like even like on Instagram, like I have met so many people like Julie and I met online, you know, like all of like my best friends I've met online. I met my partner online, you know? Um, but like I have a discord, um, and it's in my Patreon. So if you want to go head over to my Patreon, it's just the dollar tier sub. Um, that's where a lot of that goes on. And I'm working on something, a little side project that's coming out at a, hopefully by the end of this year that will be a little bit more connecting for stuff like this, but I can't talk about it yet. But Julie, if you have anything you wanna offer. Um, I was just gonna say, yeah, like just being, I always try to like uplift other like women designers because like I just, we're obviously like overshadowed in this community. And like also people are just very like clicky and mean. Like people, some people are really mean. So just like having somebody be nice to you and like genuinely show interest in your growth and want to be friends with you and just connect with you in that way. Like I, I can just like think of like maybe like 15 people I genuinely like have met through just like this past year. It's like with COVID I've just like been sharing their work and just constantly supporting them online. I think that's like I don't know the minimum of what you could do if you want to kind of build that community um i think that is like a really strong like support system um and just constantly having all of each other like share each other's work also whenever i get like a commission for something that i can't do like for like motion graphics i will suggest somebody else like another like female designer um to take the project because I want those opportunities for other people to exist. Awesome, thank you so much. And yeah, the group chat thing is happening, the thing, and I feel like that, again, the internet is our best friend, especially during quarantine, um, where everybody's basically online because that's the only way to get the outside world. Um, so the next question is from Alex Cubis. The question is, as a designer, I like to work in music and events posters, albums, EPR, and various other promotional material, such as zines, t-shirts, and flyers. Um, what kind of jobs such like role, title name, or anything in particular would you recommend for someone who wants to specialize in that kind of design? Art director, probably. I don't know if Kill would say that, but I think art director is a good term for that. We kind of oversee, that's kind of what I do with Francis, is like overseeing just like all the the visual branding and design for either a release or for an artist and their brand um 
So that could mean like you're doing all the album artwork, you're doing like the merch drops, you're doing the social media graphics and stuff like that. If that's what you were interested in, then I think an art director job is probably what you're looking for. Um, either like in-house working on many different projects or you can be an art director for a particular position. Yeah, I mean, I would also agree. Like I was kind of launched into the music industry very quickly. And even like as a regular graphic designer role, depending on who you work for and like what, like a graphic designer could be doing so many different things. You could be doing like digital assets. You could be doing sometimes photography. You could be doing merch design. You could be doing like any sort of print layout stuff. Um, it really depends like if you work for a label or if you work for where I used to work at Live Nation, like I mostly did merch, but like, you know, merch doesn't just stop at like t-shirts. There's a lot of things that like merch can be applied to and it can totally include like paper print, like scenes and posters and stuff. Um, and if you don't work in house, I mean, like you can, uh, make it like as a freelance designer and you can just kind of decide the types of projects that you want to work on yourself. But I would say that's a little bit more elusive and a little bit more complicated. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend that to anyone who's like starting out. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of, kind of a tough, tough one to answer. Awesome. So going on to the next question, Elizabeth, um, Isabel, sorry, <laughs> um, as love you both. I want to know more about how you, how much you follow trends versus historical design, um, historical design styles. And I feel like Julia, that'd be an interesting question for you, especially because you mostly like a lot of your work is very much like record, like record and vintage music inspired. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, I, I, I think I do think my work is like a little bit, it is like following like, like sprinkle in elements of like what's trending, but also things like little techniques and stuff that I like from albums because I, I do collect records. I think that's like my biggest source of inspiration when it comes to me creating mood boards uh, for something. I, my biggest inspiration is like new wave, like post-punk um, stuff like that. Uh, so a lot of a lot of the design is just honestly I'm probably pulling from like one-off designers that they hired in like the 70s and 80s that like no one ever has seen work from them ever again but like shout out to those people um so yeah in a weird way it's like kind of riffing off those people um the uh underdogs of design in that way but um but other than that I think definitely keeping up with uh trends a little bit I think I think me me and Kel share a lot of similar trends that we both follow and we both share but we're also making completely different work which was really cool um but yeah I think it's nice to have that um combination of like the historical aspect of like what you're inspired by merged with trends therefore like so it's not just all trendy stuff it's stuff that you've genuinely be, been inspired by and want to incorporate into your work rather than just following a trend. Yeah, I would definitely agree with that. It's kind of like, and I think Julia are a good example for like fashion too. Like I can tell because I've seen like so many designers um, and so much work over like the past few years. Like I can tell when someone has like a true passion for design and like creating in general, like it kind of bleeds into their entire life. It's not just design, it's like their home. It's like how they organize their car. It's how for sure. they dress yep. like, and people who are just passionate about making art, you know, like they'll sprinkle in like bits of trends because obviously that's what's popular and it's like, it's likable. Um, but focusing on like your, developing like your style over time. Like I love seeing artists grow like that, how they can kind of develop in their own. They're not trying to stick to this one type of like, you know, very predictable, but consistent style of design. It's kind of like they bounce all over and they're taking bits and pieces from everywhere. Like that's what I personally really like seeing in artists. Yeah, it, it lends well to authenticity. 
And I think that's something you can like, like, I, I don't, I mean, you probably relate to this. It's like, as soon as like, maybe you look at somebody's body of work, like you can see like the authenticity in it in that way, because like you said, like, it's kind of like their entire personality. It's like, they can't really avoid it in making yeah. what they make. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. For sure. Awesome. So on to the next question. This is from Maria. How do you balance staying consistent in your design philosophy while also creating trendy work that appeals to the client's wants and needs? Also, thank you both. You, both your work has inspired me so much. Oh, thank you. Um, I, I think, and I don't know if this is for Kel too, but like, I feel like any freelance gig I get is specific to my style like they usually have seen my work and they trust me in that sense um so there's not too much of like a disconnect between like the way that I would design something and like what the client wants and usually I try not to take on projects like that anyway like I really only want to take on projects that kind of reflect um work that I'm excited about making and that is true to me which is a, a privileged thing to be able to say and to be able to do but um I think there is like a little bit of um you have to have a little bit of wiggle room I guess when it comes to client work because you're you will be sacrificing like some of like your aesthetic to please what they want you may make this really awesome design that you think is really true to yourself and that you think really fits the client's brief but then they want to change it to something completely different but you're there because they need a designer and they trust you so just find the middle ground <laughs> I hard agree hard agree like obviously working in-house is a little bit different because you're kind of expected to have like a multifaceted design ability to fit within like seven different styles every day, which is really great. There are a lot of upsides to working in that manner because it forces you to develop your personal style even harder because you're given the opportunity to explore different aesthetics every day. Um, like I'd go from designing like really cool, like streetwear for a hip hop artist to like metal. Like it gives you a huge range to work within. But then like in freelance, yes, like people will like your work and hire you for something, but then still um, you have to meet them halfway. And sometimes I just finished a project that really sucked all the life out of me because <laughs> I, I was really excited about some elements and they took it all out, um, which obviously like it burns a little bit, but you know, that's partially why they're hiring you. And um, not seeing that as a reason to hate your art um, because it's not, you know, pleasing to a client, like derive value from your art because you enjoyed making it, whether it gets approved or not, like it still has that value. It doesn't, it doesn't mean any less because the client didn't approve it. So just do it, doing it, you know, making that original art for you versus just for like a paycheck. Like, yeah, I just kind of like see it as like, you know, whatever, it's just like, it's a job get it done, you know, please the client, but then you can know personally, well, I know I developed in this somehow because I explored this new type style. I explored this new photo treatment, whatever that may be, you know, still find that value, even if the client doesn't like it. <laughs> Everything's a step forward. Yes. Always growing. Um, awesome. Yeah. That's great advice, especially focusing on progress. Cause I think that Personally, in my work, that's something I like need to do a bit more to kind of feel less depressed when they're like, I hate it. And you're like, cool. Um, I OK, so the next question is from Graceland. And I, a few other people have asked this in varying degrees. So hopefully this covers what everybody wanted to ask. When you're starting to work with artists, it's kind of hard to um, get like an initial connection. Like they said, they DM constantly and they're just like, oh, we can't afford it or we already have a designer. So do you have any advice for starting to work with art artists or like certain clients that people are interested in? I feel like that can filter across different things. Um, I mean, I, I, I can go if, if it helps. Yeah, um, I, I'm buffering. Yeah, you can bu buffer away. Um, <laughs> I would say even like, not that I have a name for myself, but like, 
um, e- even with like a large online presence, I still do a lot of cold emailing um, because I'm at this point, like I'm seeking out specific artists that I'm trying to pin down and do work for. Um, and it is a, a little bit of both building like a reputation for yourself is the like one of the most effective ways to gain clients. And that doesn't necessarily mean just like online, having a large social media presence. It's also like within the industry. And oftentimes those designers are incredibly underrated that like have like 800 followers on Instagram, but like they produce some of the best work I've seen in my life. And so it's, it's a little bit of like connecting with people online and also offline, like Julia, I know you gained like a lot of your connections through like actually like on the ground in the music scene. And I know more of my connections from like working at Live Nation where I worked with a lot of like people from like labels and other art directors and other designers and friends of designers and kind of like pushing yourself into that scene. Um, And also like, don't be afraid to like cold DM, cold email. You never know what can come of it. They might not have something for you right now, but like down the line, you know, you never know, but you're always looking for more work as a freelancer. It never really ends. (laughs) It doesn't ever really become super stable. Yeah. I, the hustle is like really like never ending. Um, I think I've had the most luck just through like just straight up DMing somebody or like emailing somebody like the worst they can do is like not respond or say no but you won't really ever know like not really design related but like forever ago when I was still doing photo this sort of serves as a purpose of like a lesson of networking um I just sent a DM on Twitter to diet sig and was like hey like I thought you're gonna be in Baltimore like do you want to come by the Micah photo studio and I can take some photos of you and they said yes so like they wouldn't have done that if I didn't reach out and say that um so just like taking that leap um somebody else said uh hey um said something about like would you suggest making a project and then sending it to an artist be like can I can you use this I wouldn't do that mostly just because like I feel like it's I don't know I I personally work with like a lot of smaller artists so I feel like if I were to make something and send it to them there's like a lot of pressure of like can you pay me to use this or like, you know, something like that. I, I think the most, obviously like I make band posters for fun and I tag the bands, but there's never ever like a um, understanding of like, th- there is an understanding um, from me that they don't have to respond or use it for anything or do anything with it because I made it for fun. Um, so it's sort of that expectation of not pressuring them because you're not forming genuine connections that way. Yeah. Dude, I think that's very helpful. It's like, especially just like, again, making authentic con- connections with people rather than like, I want something from you and you can give me something. Um, so on to the next question, we're heading into the last couple of questions. Please make sure to submit your posters. Um, I think someone is running a time check on that. So just keep an eye out for it in the chat. And I feel like this question leads a lot to like imposter syndrome and just like, especially when you're new and getting started, this is from I'm sorry if I pronounced that wrong. Um, at the beginning, were you confident in your work or is this something um, something you did to ask yourself if it wasn't good enough? So just like dealing with imposter syndrome and putting yourself out there and just having confidence I think, in yourself as a designer. Oh God. I, I think me and Cal like consistently still go through imposter syndrome. Like I don't think there's ever a day where you're not going through that. Um, even things that I made like two months ago, I'm like, this is god awful. Like I hate it so much. Um, and I think that's like how you know you're an artist is because like that happens. It's just like what it's, it's the natural process. Um, I know I've only been designing for a year. I started during a little bit dear she said there was a storm coming oh no (laughs) but i don't i don't i don't know if the storm has arrived maybe because as i get because like as a i guess self-taught person um there's always 
the imposter syndrome of like, well, I'm not like the people who like went to school for this and all that. Um, I don't have the proper training, whatever that means. Um, it's like a worthiness sort of thing, um, but it's trying to battle that every day, I think. Definitely. Like I, I still deal with it all the time. And like, whenever I have work rejected, I'm like, oh, well, it's because I'm a terrible designer, obviously. Um, and I think not to blame it on capitalism, but I'm going to, um, that especially in a commodified form of design and art in general, like we're taught to only see that value when it's accepted by others. And so it kind of perpetuates that imposter syndrome, like that we're never good enough, even though a art should not, you know, be created solely for, uh, value like a monetary value um when we should you know while we can do that we can also see that value for ourselves growing as a designer everything that we make is a step forward whether we like it or not or whether it's approved by a client or not or whether it's shared online or not and that's something that like my followers have helped me a lot with is that like I don't always need to make the best work so I can just share it online like I can just make art for me. And it's something that really helps me with like burnout, but also, you know, how, how I view myself as a creative and putting yourself first over, you know, like, am I good enough? It's really hard. Like it's easier said than done. Um, but it's one of the most valuable lessons I think I'm still learning as a designer is that imposter syndrome is a cop in your head who's telling you that you're not good enough. So kill the cop in your head not with that you know shout out to grandpa my grandpa the poster is there have it up my <laughs> thank you yeah go download it <laughs> yeah um and also so kind of leading off that and we're gonna be in our final two questions thank you everybody for submitting i'm sorry we didn't get to all of it um appreciate all of you for being here um so the one the last second to last question what is your favorite way of getting some downtime away from designing kind of dealing like to help deal with burnout this was by isa Sorry if I got that wrong. Um, do you have any suggestions on how to balance your work and your like work life designing and just your time away from the screen? Julia, if you want to answer that, because I don't have an answer. <laughs> um, well, hmm. are we asking the question of what we do when we're not designing so we don't feel burnout, burnt out, or are we asking the question of what do we do? to make ourselves more relaxed so we can resume working and not being burnt out. Like, uh, I don't know, but I, <laughs> are very um, valid, but probably more the first one from the way they structure the question. I, I guess like just kind of embracing the burnout, I guess, like if you can stepping away, because like, there's nothing worse than like forcing yourself to design and like create something when you're completely burnt out. Um, I've said this since like, I was in college, but how are you going to make art and make work like if you are not in your best state, like if you're not doing well, so take the no job is like worth sacrificing your mental energy and health and physical health over. Um, so if you need to take that time away, and I literally just had a conversation about this the other day with somebody, I was just like, you know, it sucks that, you know, this, this, you're in this time crunch for this job, but, and it's stressing you out, but realize that like, you're not going to die. Like if this is not completed, like take care of yourself, um, and take that time off. Like if you're especially burnt out to recharge, um, because sucks burnout sucks but like also finding hobbies that maybe are artistic in a way that are design um so like I am learning how to play the bass I also watch a lot of movies um listen to music obviously um go out to live shows things like that that are like a different ways of expressing artistic value and like things I'm interested in without actually creating something like me having to do the heavy lifting but yeah I agree with that big time like picking up a hobby for me that I couldn't commodify in a way 
Like I love like picking up like dumb little like arts and craft hobbies, but then I'm like, I could turn this into something. And I'm like, no, I don't, I literally don't need to do that. I literally Capitalize don't need to do that. <laughs> Yeah, like literally what is wrong with me? Um, for me, it's been my plants. Like my plants have brought me a lot of like therapy and I love watching them grow and change and some of them die. I'll allow it, but you know, tending to something like when I care for something, it helps me like care about myself. Like I can project that care that I wish I could be giving directly to myself onto a plant. And like, I feel better when I see like a plant, you know, come back to life that like I overwatered twice and I can like rehab it. And now it's doing better. Like I, I like that natural process of like things repairing and regrowing. And so get a house plant. <laughs> house plants are great. <laughs> Okay, so this is like a half question. I suppose when I was kind of bidding and thing, and I feel like we have to say it. How are your cats? <laughs> um, <laughs> how are uh, they? I don't think any of them are in here. I realize so we have like really loud doors that like they're like barn doors, and they rattle, and the cats love like to paw at the door so the door rattles. So I stuffed a little stuffed animal, and I just noticed it that it's been in the frame this whole time, but it's a little giraffe. <laughs> <laughs> so the door wouldn't rattle while um because they they love coming in here but they're great they're really great they're usually like in the back yeah you guys have seen my litter box <laughs> this whole time <laughs> um but if anyone has been wondering if they wanted to get a litter robot uh litter box for people who have many cats highly recommend um, it's been one of my better purchases and the cats really like it and it keeps the litter box hello camera um, keeps the litter box clean so they don't um, get like it helps with like UTIs and stuff but yeah it's my spaceship uh, litter box that's in the back of all of my zoom calls everyone who's ever on a call with me this is exactly what they see and sometimes they watch the cats go in there so but they're great they're just not in here right now because they would be all over my desk. They've like exited Zoom calls for me before. So they're they're not allowed in here when I'm on a call. <laughs> okay. And the final question, so we can just quickly scroll through people's work and be mindful of both your times. Um, how do you ensure your work um, like keeps to the style, I think you basically answer this, but how do you ensure your work keeps to like a style or a brand and like just having that authenticity in your work and just making sure like um, you're not like you're like some people are scared their work looks too similar, some people are scared their work looks too different. How do you just make sure you have a thread between a common thread between all your work? Oh, I got this one. Um, I think Kel will say something similar to me. Literally, nobody is creating anything original. Um, nobody has been for a really long time we're all just kind of regurgitating the same stuff which is fine because like if you just like doing what you're doing it's whatever um but yeah I would just say like I don't really like particularly like fitting myself into a like certain style because like I feel like that puts too much of a box around things so, like you should just be free to do whatever um and uh, I think just like making work that I feel like at the end, I look at it and I'm like, yes, this feels like a representation of me and what I would make. And I'm happy that I, that it came out the way it did for a client, then that is my style. That is my aesthetic. Um, never do I want to open a Photoshop um, thing, 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 Photoshop file and um, be like, today I want to make a specific poster that is in this style and I'm only keeping it in this style because that is way too restrictive and just allow yourself to be like more free in that sense is what I would say. Yeah, definitely agree. Yeah, no one is original. Um, and I think whenever I make something that I'm happy with, it, it kind of ties back to like the authenticity point that I can tell when I had a good time making a project and I can tell when other designers had a good time making a project. Like I know, like I can tell like when Julia does a poster that she was really jazzed about, I can tell. I can tell like any other designer when they're really excited about a project that like true personality and authenticity comes through. And that's, I think like the tying thread in people's work. And it can be all over the place, 
but like that kind of realness that comes through whether that's like it just looks like people had like a good time I don't know if that makes any sense but like I can I can tell when people have a lot of fun with their work and even if it's across many styles like people are multifaceted they don't have to be you know restricted to just one type of aesthetic and I think when people explore different styles and just try to have fun with it I think that's when you can like tie it all together awesome thank you so much um uh, and also just going through all the posters y'all are so talented like it's incredible I will definitely share the stuff with you and Julia like Kel and Julia like later but like so we picked like three under each artist and we're going to just quickly show them and like go through them Lord, let the screen share thing cool. um, I was gonna say I said in the chat that um yesterday I sort of set up a hashtag uh for if you guys post them on Instagram it's just 30 minute uh, 30 min poster challenge um so if you post them on instagram we can share them and look at them awesome. so, cool, cool. cool so here's the first one i chose one rena one meg and one deb so oh we got some illustrated work and this is by ella Ga. i hope i got that right this is insane <laughs> How did you do this in such a short period of time? Let me see. Oh. Yeah, there we go. Oh my God, the love for in, in the chat is going crazy. I'm trying to find, um, Elga, if you could put up your hand if you're still here. Uh, where is it? Someone went to work. Oh, I found it. Here. Wow. I'm allowing you to talk so you can unmute yourself and just like talk about your design. Uh, hey, I'm, I'm from Quebec, so I don't speak good English, but I'm gonna try. <laughs> so uh, yeah, um, I'm, I like illustration. So I was like, I'm gonna do illustration the fastest I can. And it was just line art. So I was like, oh, I'm gonna duplicate and do something with the back layer and the, yeah it kind of happened and I didn't have letters until the last minute so there's like an error in the in the title but <laughs> yeah so that's pretty much it <laughs> no I love this this is like a to be able to sketch anything out in such a short period of time is truly impressive it takes me hours to do something even semi complex but no you absolutely killed this I love the texture in the back I love like the little like green bit in the pink with like the yellow I think that's a really nice touch add some dimension to it yeah what is that texture uh it was just a gold texture on splash and the first one that seemed okay i put it in the back <laughs> oh, cool. wow awesome i love it thank you it's very fantastic much. it's very thank impressive so um okay so let me sorry zoom is tricky so let me move on to the next one screen share we have the sub poster and if you want to raise your hand um i'll unmute you so you can talk about it really briefly elena elena Yay, we got some dead representation. Amazing. Uh, okay. Oh, found you, got you. Okay, cool. You should be able to speak. Hi. Oh my gosh. I love you both, just so you know. <laughs> but uh yeah, I um I was like rushing because I kind of wasn't prepared. Um I just got out of class too. Um so the background was like really fun because I'm wearing this like funky sweater and it's like crocheted so I like took a picture oh. and kind of like messed with the textures um and then yeah I don't really know it's kind of a mess definitely not something that I'm like a perfectionist too so I, I don't 30 minutes is very difficult for me but mm -hmm. this was kind of fun because I do want to take it further um but yeah I just kind of like added some lyrics I love adding like different textures throughout and I'm trying to be better with that. So this was kind of like my time to like go forward with it, but, but yeah. 
yeah i love that um cursive type you used and i also really like um i love how we both use like a photo like for the textures like the background um I would have never guessed. I was actually literally going to ask how, to, like, what's the background because it looks really cool. But that is awesome and very resourceful. I love the little like smileys and like frowny faces. It's very on par with Dead and their brand. Thank you. I really like the Dead text just in general. Like, I just love like the placement and I like the little like offset behind it. I think that the type is like really on brand for them too. Thank you. Oh my gosh. I'm like totally fangirling right now. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, same. <laughs> this is awesome. Thank you guys so much. Especially for like coming just out of class. That's incredible. Yeah, more power to you. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Oh my gosh. Awesome. Of course. I am amazed that you used your sweater. Like that is like so resourceful. Um, okay, let me put on the last one. We have our Megan Principal. Uh, and if you would just like to raise your hand, Isabel, um, and I should be able to find you and meet you. Sorry, it might take me a hot second, but okay, found you. Awesome. There you go. And you're able to speak. <laughs> Hello, can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Hi. Um. So for this, I was trying to sin as much as I could, just like all of the Photoshop tools that I learned in the beginning of um I don't know just like learning the Adobe programs like that um the magic wand tool just like skewing selections being crazy and like m my graphic design professors would probably get like so mad about this which makes me so happy about it that's always how you know it's gonna be a good one is if you're pissing people off <laughs> exactly. especially design professors because some for of them sure <laughs> I am obsessed with like the 3D background. Like the more I look at it, the more detailed it is. They look like little like um, candy cane, like monkey bars. Yeah. Also, I love a stroke on that type. I, yeah. I love like outer strokes like that when type overlaps. And like the, Fantastic. the kerning is super cool. Thank you. And I love the flower coming out of her eye. It's not imagery you would typically see with Megan, which is like really cool. Yeah, it's definitely like nice to see like artists with like very different styles. It's sometimes kind of pretty fun. Mm -hmm. awesome. Thank you as well. Thank you so much for submitting your work. This is beautiful and stunning. Thank um, you. Yeah. Okay, cool. So that we are coming to the end of the event. Again, just to say the final thank you. Thank you everybody for attending. Thank you, Kel and Julia for streaking. I know designing live can be a bit tricky, but I very much appreciate the fact that you're able to do it and come through in the end. And just letting everybody know, the um, this event has been recorded, so you will be able to access it again if you wanna go back and like look at little details or anything at all. We will make sure to get that in everybody's hands so they're able to. Um, but yeah, thank you for coming to this event. Um, and have a nice night, I guess, or day, wherever you are. Thank yeah, you thanks, all. guys. Thanks for coming. It was nice to see everyone. And thank you so much for submitting your work. I'm definitely really excited to, you know, see more work from everyone. Definitely use the hashtag um, so we can see what everyone created. I will be posting my Rena poster. I'm going to finish it up a little bit more. And then I'm going to post it under that same hashtag. So... Yeah, I want to see yeah. I want to see your guys's work, and we'll make sure to repost the hashtags on the PD page. So after the event, if you just go back to the page you signed up on, it will be there for everybody to use. So yep, huh. awesome. bye everyone. Awesome, bye guys. Bye.